so beautiful. So beautiful. I've known Charles for a lot of years. And um, but anyway, um, everybody has ten minutes, so I'm going to speak very uh, briefly. Um, when I was uh, I was born in Spanish Harlem, as Charles said, and uh, at the age of seven in 1953. My uh, grandmother picked us up from Spanish Harlem, brought us over here to the Bronx to live in a little house on Snake Hill, 184th Street. And so over the years, I grew up coming to Poe Park. Now at the time, Poe did not have a playground for children. So we didn't come here to play, we came here to roller skate. But on Sundays, I think it was Sundays because we were always dressed in our Sunday best, to come to Poe Park, for a concert. The little girls, and I was one of the little girls, had the ribbons in our hair and the big poofy dresses, and we would come here to see the bands playing in the band shell. And I wanna see that again. But I was always amazed how many people would get inside that band shell and the numbers of people that would surround that band shell listening to the music. And then teenagers would be dancing the Lindy Hop, and you would hear music of rock and roll playing there, and jazz and um, jazz concerts also. But I was always amazed, and I was always I couldn't wait to be a teenager to be just like them. The kids, the um, the teenage boys with their leather jackets, I thought they were so gorgeous. They wore the leather jackets. They had the DA hairstyle and the little curl coming down. I thought they were amazing. But anyway. By the time I became a teenager, that was going out. And then it was uh, the, the uh, what was it? Uh, <laughs> the music of, uh, of uh, Smokey Robinson came in and all that, the Chantels. But anyway, I used to do um, harmonizing also. I had a, a singing group and I was the lead singer. And so we used to harmonize in the corner. That was in the 60s. And then, I'm going to move a little bit, in the 80s, I was raising my children here, the late 70s, and the 80s and into the 90s, I was raising my children here on Valentine Avenue. So my kids were always coming here to Poe Park, and during the, uh, the era of the hip-hop era, well, I didn't know these kids were going to become famous, but they were hanging out in my house. They were my kids' friends. And so kids like... Um, uh, Crazy Legs, Fable, um, Kuriaki used to be hanging out over there and they would always say to me, come on, let's go uh, to the park. We're going to do some, um, some uh, what do you call it, <laughs> battle. We're going to battle this group or we're going to battle that group. And they would be in the park and I would come with my camera because I'm just photographing my kids and their friends and uh, never knowing anything about what was going to happen but I would be photographing them and I'd go to the clubs with them. But they spent a lot of time here. And a lot of people walk in here and say to me, oh, I grew up here. And I said, when? And they said, in the 80s. And I said, if you grew up here in the 80s and you came to Pope Park, you knew my kids. You know? And you knew their friends. Then we start talking. This just happened yesterday, too. A woman walked in and she said, I met my husband here 30 years ago in Pope Park. I said, when? She said, in the 80s. I said, Okay, you hung out here, did you know, so, and she started screaming, yes, she knew them. So she was one of the people coming here to Poe Park. So a lot, this Poe Park is an amazing place because besides Edgar Allan Poe being in this area, all right, a lot of people who are, uh, have a lot of memories and have been part of history have come through here. And so in the hip hop era, when these kids were dancing, I had no idea these kids were going to become famous. They were just my kids' friends, you know? And, uh, and so some of my pictures have become part of the history of hip hop and some of the paraphernalia jackets that they spray painted and made pictures, you know, they spray painted pictures. But in any case, just, I just want to say also a few months ago in November, a man walked in. There was, um, they were videotaping him over there. And then he came over here, he came in, and he said to me, can I go into the cottage? I said, well, I don't have anything to do with the cottage. The Bronx Historical Society does. I'll call them. He said, no, 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 it'll take too much time, but they're doing a documentary about me. I said, who are you? 
He said, well, I'm a writer, and I grew up here, and I'm writing a book about having grown up here. I said, oh, great. Give me the name of your book. I'd like to get it. I got the name of the book, and I ordered it and everything. But after he left, I looked up his name. Or, 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 or <laughs> Avery Corman. Kramer versus Kramer and oh God. All right, I started screaming. I said, oh my God. <laughs> so, but anyway, a lot of famous people have come through here also. And um, so I just wanted to give my little part and, uh, and let you know that the kids who became famous in the hip hop era used to dance right here in Popar. I used to be here watching teenagers dance. So I've come through here through many, you know, the different periods. And uh, I'm so happy to be here and happy to see you guys here. And I'm a Bronx lover. Although I was born in Spanish Harlem, I love the Bronx because this is where I've been all my life. Thank you. Thanks, Lizzie. <laughs>